Hey, how's it going? Um, I want to talk about something today. I'm a little nervous about it, but you know it's going to get better and better every time. Uh, what I want to talk about today is um, kind of a touchy topic, but I'm going to try to address it because it's also giving a shout out and it's also a testimony. And that is talking about my parents, parenting. Um, in parenting, you know, the main thing that people think about is the scripture where it says, uh, it's Proverbs 22 and 3, and it says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Um, that is a very true statement, and before I go in that, I'm just going to say this. I plan on hitting a lot of stuff today, like talking about um, a lot of other scriptures um, that have to deal um, with parenting and my perspective of it. Um, first thing I want to talk about is my parents and where they began. Um, my father never knew his father from what I know. Um, my mother, her mother died when my mother was five years old. Um, and from what she can remember, like some of the stuff that she says, uh, you know, some of, oh, it's, uh, it's not the best from what she had said it was like um, she kind of like was raised by her father and you know I guess there was some problems there too um, but one thing that I just want to say about them is that they look past what they saw growing up as a model of what a parent was and they allowed Jesus Christ to become their mother and their father um, I said to my dad before um, that I commend him and I'm very grateful uh, for him as a father because um, not having a pattern, not having anything to look after, um, it can be hard. Um, I'm pretty sure it can be challenging when you're faced with the task to be this quote unquote good, beyond a good spirit, I mean a good father, but you're supposed to be a good spiritual role model and you didn't have that to pattern, you didn't have to, you didn't have anything that you can you know, pull from. You know, but um, it's true what God says in his word that if you ask of him, he'll give it to you freely. Um, so that's what happened there. My, my dad uh, served God the best he could and, and God was gracious enough to, to give him steps. And um, he was an awesome father. Um, they, one thing that I can say my dad did was this. He always had it in his mind to give his kids better than what he had um, and in that <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm thinking about just like the way that um, the African-American the black culture the way they are anyway um, I'm just gonna say this quickly it's, it seems that black people are always starting from scratch it seems like um, we're always we don't leave anything for the next generation one thing I noticed about other cultures is they build and that they save. And when they save, when they're not here, they're able to pass something along. So that the next generation that comes, they have something to base a lifestyle off of. So that's why it seems like they're always increasing. That's why it seems like they're always getting ahead. Because they value knowledge and they value things like saving. Now, I'm not saying that all black people don't do that. But I'm just saying that's something that we as a whole need to look into. We need to look into um, being a people that are not concerned with just today, but also take tomorrow into consideration. Um, but back to my father. Um, growing up um, in downtown Cincinnati, he decided that he would want to raise his family outside of Cincinnati to kind of um, get around better schools, a better environment. And um, that's what he did. He was able to um, move us out, and I guess that's bringing me to my first, um, the first little topic that I want to talk about is the, like the different types of parents, and I'm going to give you a couple scenarios. You can have one father who wants to provide for his kids, wants to give them the best they can, and because of that, he has to do something that most people have to do, work a job. So he works a job, and he works from uh, 8 a.m., doesn't get home till around 6 p.m. The son goes to school 
from about 8 p.m. till around what 2:30 or 3. Um, but when he gets home, his father's not there. Um, his mother might be there, but his father's not there. And um, life goes on like that. That's pretty much how it is every day. The father gets home, and you know, some days they get to talk, some days they don't. You know, some days he's tired. But one thing that never happens is there's never not a day where there's food on the table. Um, he's always provided for, and the father shows uh, great respect. So that's one scenario. Um, another one is this. You have a, a, a father who is around the house a lot, um, doesn't really have a job, um, you know, gets to spend a lot of you know time with the kid or whatever and talking. But then the kid goes through rough stages where they don't have things like food. You know, they don't have things like clothes, and they, they live through this little rough st rough stage um, where that can bring some problems, that can bring some stresses too. Um, I would say that I was around the beginning more than the end, and um, I'm thinking about it now. Uh, do I know my father? Yes. If I wanted to get to know my father better, could I do that? Yes. Would I have wanted it any other way? No. He did an excellent job. While he was there, while he was there, like after after school and after work and all that, he was the example of what a godly man is supposed to be. I never seen him hit my mom. I never seen him raise his voice and yell at my mom or speak to my mom disrespectful. Um, they had great communication. Um, never cheated, never beat me beyond what I deserve because I did some crazy things. Um, <laughs> he was pretty reasonable with his whoopings. Um, I might tell a story one day about um, that one whooping that I got that I'll never forget. I got hit so hard I remember saying, Dad, <laughs> Dad, come on. You are hitting me too hard. You know, now I can go over that whole story. It's hilarious. But um, it, was, it was really, really good. I would not have wanted to have it any other way. Um, as far as my mother, oh yeah, my father was a very educated person. He was an architect. Um, so that was cool to say, you know, growing up, my dad's an architect. Hey, my dad loves me. Um, my dad was also one of these people. I know that sometimes people grow up around people who say, do as I say and not as I do. Um, basically what that is, is you have somebody who's saying, you know, don't smoke, don't smoke, don't smoke. Smoke is bad for you, son. This, that, and the other. But they smoking all the time. You know what I'm saying? Um, or, you know, yeah, stuff like that. I believe sometimes that you don't have to talk all the time. You can just be who you are. You can be an example. And that will be enough to motivate and inspire whoever is supposed to be getting something from you. So the fact that my dad came home I mean my dad worked every day the fact that my dad allowed my mom to drive the car when he caught the bus every day for years when he didn't have to because he can get another car anytime he wanted to but he thought he prioritized okay he used priorities and said there were some things that were more needed in the house because he did those things and me being a smart, intelligent man, I paid attention to those things. I know I now know how to do those things today. So you don't need a lecture all the time when you have somebody that you can look at that are doing what they're supposed to do.